It's time for Faith Friday on the Mary Beth Conley Show. Now, here's your host, Mary Beth Conley. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Faith Friday on the Mary Beth Conley Show, where we're making better communities one person at a time. You are listening to FM 107.9 and AM 990 on the dial. KWAMTheVoice.com for everyone everywhere else. And while you're online today, go to lauracazor.org. Let me spell that for you, K-A-C-Z-O-R. But if you are a consumer of contemporary Christian music or worship music, you already know exactly who I'm talking about. She has been produced by multi-dove award-winning producers. She's, grand, you know, just a contemporary Christian singer, lives in Nashville, mother of two, and her latest album, Restore Me, Beautiful, beautiful album. Laura has been named uh, a top ten new female Christian singer back in 2012. And she's been on the top of the Billboard charts, what, with half a dozen songs? How many songs, Laura? I don't want to take anything away from you. I'm I'm ready to elevate you. Yeah, I think that's about right. Unbelievable. Originally from Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Tennessee is so glad that you call us home. Uh, so yeah. your latest song, Greater, is really taking off. Tell me what prompted that song. Well, first, I, I want to thank you so much for, for having me on the show today. And I'm, I'm so glad that uh, Greater has been ministering to you. Uh, yes, you know, I, I was, actually, was actually the first song that I wrote on that album. And did it I just take a while to did it just take a while to take off or catch on or what? No, well, it just I don't know. I guess we just maybe decided to release it a little bit later um, in, in the cycle. Um, I think that's probably all that that, that was. But uh, um, no, I, it was you know being an artist and being in an industry that does often kind of point to self. You mm-hmm. know, even in the Christian sphere, um, I think it was just a song that I was writing as uh, as a reminder and as a prayer uh, that just in everything that I do that I wanted Jesus to be greater and I wanted myself to be to be less and that was really the easy kind of the impetus for writing that song and I'm, I'm just I'm so glad that it's been received as well as it has yeah I think that what um what strikes me most about that song is it it anyone whether you're a ma a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad mm-hmm. Or, you know, a secretary, a bookkeeper, a policeman, or, you know, someone in a prominent profession like yourself should have Mm -hmm. this prayer. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, very applicable in pretty much any, just being a Christ follower. I mean, in whatever capacity it is, you know, that we're living our lives. I mean, that really should be our prayer. And I feel like now and culturally, there's just, there's just so much noise and there's so much, you know, look at me, look at me. Yep. Yeah, you know, we as Christians need to be just elevating, elevating Christ constantly, and and that's really the only way that we'll see change. You know, in our culture. I was um, so. just gonna say that. Are more than ever, and I don't know whether it's social media or I think so. or just too yeah. much media in general. Mm-hmm. Everyone's opinion uh, seems to be the biggest. Uh, if you you know he or she who gets the most likes or shares or you right. know attention is suddenly made prominent, not necessarily based on anything other than getting the most attention, which really inspires some outrageous behavior. It's true. It's a really good point. It is. So and, wh- how does that damage our, our relationship with Christ in general as a people? What does that do to if us, in other words? What's the risk of, yeah, of continuing to not speak out against that? You know, well, I mean, ultimately, we're called to be witnesses. Um, and really, what this world needs is they need to see the transformative power of Christ in our lives. And what a countercultural stand to say, look, I'm doing this to elevate Jesus, not to elevate myself. And so when people look at us, it's such a... A, this is such a revolutionary stand, you know, and that's really where people are going to see the power of Christ for transformation in our life. And if we don't do it, I feel like our witness uh, loses a lot of of power, you know, where people 
you know, they, they, we, we claim to be Christ followers, but they don't see that difference in our lives, and that does kind of, I would imagine, leave people kind of scratching their heads. You know, yeah. what's different about what's different about a Christian, and how is their relationship with Christ really changing and revolutionary, revolutionizing their lives? So, I think that's that's really the biggest detriment of you know, if we don't we don't do it, it really kind of damages our witness. And, yeah. and it's you know, we're constantly warring against our flesh, and we have to constantly surrender that and and crucify that and, and just leave it at the foot of the cross and uh, we have to be aware of it and it's you know it creeps up everywhere you know in our yes. lives and we have to constantly be you know surrendering it and it's it's a it's a continual prayer and so I think that's you know why the song too has been so impactful it's just it's just a wonderful reminder to hear it and to be able to sing along along with it you know Jesus Savior become greater you know in everything that we do but it's kind so. of um contradictory almost because as the song explodes yeah. it's being played yeah. everywhere how do you what do you do to remind yourself because it's a daily thing and it's not all yeah. that easy i can only imagine that it's harder the more popular the song gets do you listen to the song what do you do to keep yourself grounded in that reminder this isn't about me That's- yeah, that's a great question. I mean, again, it's about constantly surrendering that every day, you know, in my quiet time and in prayer time and just committing the song to him, whatever happens. And also just acknowledging it, that I feel like I was, you know, a vessel that was used to write it, but really I feel like the Holy Spirit wrote the song, you know, and that was, it was something that, you know, God wanted to use me to, to write and to, you know, put this in a format cause that could be shared with others and just constantly reminding myself of my role in the process, that it's, it's not about me or my talent or, or lack thereof or whatever. It's about my willingness to just allow the Holy Spirit to work and so, just to constantly put myself in that place. So I'm going to ask you to be real transparent for just a minute. Uh, and, this, okay. and this may not make any sense, but sometimes, <laughs> like I know, when I am in my prayer time and I'm I'm getting ready to embark on yet another project, and I really want to be in his will. I really do, but then there's that side of me that's like, but it'd be really cool if this was your will, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm really like, and I know in my head, um, it's like I want to slap myself and really, really, really mean that I really want your will, and if you tell me not to do this, if you put the stops on this, it will be perfectly fine with me because I really want to be in your will. But then there's yes. that side of me, I really am not sure I really do, because it would really be cool if it was, you know. Does this make sense? Mm-hmm. How, do you yeah. ever have those moments when you are like, just, you're saying, um, God, thank you so much for allowing me to be the vessel through which this song, and then that little other little lower islands are on your shoulder <laughs> go in other words you know like when you go to a gym you're the gym and you really don't feel like working out but you're there and so you go through the motions and you tell yourself well at least i'm here going through the motions i'm trying to put myself in this place and so you get some credit does that ever happen with yeah. you and is that normal or does that make sense yeah you know oh totally i would say i'm sure it's, it's very normal I would say also it happens probably less and less Oh, good. But it does still happen. You know, I mean, when I, I'm in my mid-30s now, and when I was first doing this in my 20s, I feel like there was a lot of a lot of insecurity, and there was a lot of fear and kind of looking for the approval of man, which I think is just, you know, part of that, um, that maturation process. You know, as you mature in Christ and you mature as, as a woman or a man, and, you know, you try to work, work through those things, and hopefully some of those things happen less and less. Like I would say that that is true but does it happen of course you know you just, okay you rec- recognize it and um you know to try to always come back to center and just remember what it's all about okay but, i just um, wondered if it fun. ever really happened to you and how you got past yeah. it so if so for those folks out there who are feeling that and like well yeah i want to i want to be in his will too i want to you know do my work for his glory but sometimes i don't feel it if they might feel a little guilt they shouldn't just stay right Right. there it's like the workout go and work out and he knows your heart is pure and you're really trying and you'll get there as you mature yeah yeah okay that's that's absolutely that's that's a great word word of encouragement awesome i feel better um (laughs) you know you can tell i'm talking to myself thanks freddie is really all about me okay well laura if i can hang on to you for just a second (laughs) Number one, we want to play greater in full, but 
I also want to hear from you your personal faith story, um, because you were raised in the church, and at some point you were also in music and theater, and you had talent, and you loved that. You were doing, you know, you were taking voice lessons. You were, you were pursuing music. But what clicked for you when you realized that you really were a vessel, and and you needed to use your musical talent to to praise and the one who gave you that talent. So we'll be right back. More with Laura's personal faith story in just a moment. It's Faith Friday on the Mary Beth Conley Show. FM 107.9 and AM 990 on the dial. KWAMTheVoice.com for everyone everywhere else. Faith Friday is brought to you by SavingsForGood.org where you can get travel savings completely free. Whatever you save, we give to small organizations doing the work of the kingdom of God. And we will be right back. The Mary Beth Conley Show on KWAM, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Welcome back to Faith Friday on the Mary Beth Conley Show, FM 107.9 and AM 990 on the dial. KWAMTheVoice.com for everyone everywhere else. While you're online later today, please go to LauraKazor.com. I believe it's... .com. No, it's .org. I am so sorry. Laura Kazor is spelled K-A-C-Z-O-R, but you already know that because you know this Christian artist uh, very well if you are listening at all to, uh, you know, to Christian radio because her song Greater is all over the place. And all her other songs, if you have not been exposed, you really need to restore me for one thing is a song that for any uh, anyone who's gone through a real challenge... Oh, my goodness, what a powerful song that is. So, Laura, thank you for being with us. You are also the founder, I should say, of um, Life Thirst, which is um, all about evangelism. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But first, I want to hear why you turned from someone who was doing music. You were, you were as a kid, I mean, you, your talent was recognized. You took voice lessons. You were doing some theater. You were performing, doing your thing. When did it change for you? to where you realized you needed to do that thing for him? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I, it was my junior or senior year in high school. I believe it was my senior year in high school. I was invited by a friend uh, to a youth worship service at a different church, a church that I wasn't attending at the time. And it was really my first experience with um, modern worship or contemporary worship. Gotcha. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was so transformative for me. And so, you know, all along through middle school, high school, I was doing lots of singing, lots of theater, thought maybe I wanted to pr- pursue that or even classical uh, classical uh, uh, voice. And then when I, you know, had that encounter with a Lord in a corporate uh, modern worship uh, experience, I just knew from that moment on that I wanted to just use my talents and, and to, to do Christian music kind of in whatever capacity that look like were you or because you were raised in church you were going to church was it a more formal denomination or formal church yeah. was it just, yes it was a, a worship style was a say more formal I mean, we were singing out of a hymnal which Got you know it. now i absolutely adore and i love you know and anytime we sing any of those hymns it's just it's such a powerful thing for me in our right. in our worship services now uh, but at the time you know uh, it you know, as, as capturing the mind of an 18-year-old and the heart of an 18-year-old experiencing that corporate worship, it was or that modern worship, it was so different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it just was like, oh, this is amazing. You know, I just have to be involved in this movement, this movement in the church. And uh, there was a really cool festival that goes on in Pennsylvania called the Creation Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, we went out also that same year uh, with our whole youth group and Again, that was the first time I was really exposed to all of these different, you know, contemporary uh, Christian artists and different genres and just seeing the impact of that music. And so it all kind of happened at the same time. It was a really good timing because it was right before I left for college. So that really changed the direction of my my college career. And I got really involved with uh, Campus Crusade for Christ uh, on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania where I went to school and... um, it just was really involved with worship there, and really that's where I started doing a lot of my songwriting. Well, and that's exactly why uh, so many churches are, are transitioning to the more contemporary style, because we need to get young people. We need. My mother, uh, I was yeah. raised in a very formal um, religion, and my mother went with me to my current church at one point and said, well, 
this is this is nice. It's not really church. It's more like a rock concert. And I turned to her and I said, "Do you see the teenagers who are here?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's is that why you started the Life Thirst events? Because that's what yeah. that is. It's basically a concert, right? Yeah. That was the vision behind it initially. Was just to be, you know, a, a kind of a parachurch ministry that could come alongside churches and bring in great artists and speakers and with a focus on worship, on modern worship and evangelism, so that the speaker would be presenting the gospel and, uh, in, you know, that would be a big, big focus. And so they have, that's what started it, and it was really that my experience to those uh, early worship services that, uh, you know, really kind of formulated the vision for Life Thirst. I love it. So many of the songs I referred to the album Restore Me uh, a moment ago, and many of those songs were written during a really tough time for you. How mm-hmm. did you first of all talk about that tough time and how writing this music, was this like in your prayer time journaling about this time in your life? How did all that come about? Yeah, that's great. Well, actually a lot of the songs I, I wrote before, well, the, the the difficult time, and I'll kind of reference that, is so I have two children. I have a four-and-a-half-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. Um, when I was pregnant with my four-and-a-half-year-old son, they discovered that he most likely had a heart defect mm-hmm. um, when I was 20 weeks pregnant and had a really just a difficult pregnancy then from there on out with lots of tests and lots of, you know, just lots of unknown. And then when he was born, thankfully, it, 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 uh, you know, it ended up not being as bad as it could have been. You know, he had to have one surgery uh, for heart surgery when he was six months old for it to be repaired. And, and then, thankfully, he's, he's been fine, you know, ever since. Uh, but that whole year and a half was just very, very trying. And um, I just spent so much time on my knees, you know, flat on my face, just crying out to God for, for this child and for our family. And uh, just there was, there was just relying on him and so much. And... Yeah. Uh, you know, looking back on it, even you know, through the surgery, I kind of referenced it in my mind as it actually was a really sweet time, believe it or not, just because of the presence of God was, you know, was so rich there with us, in the room with us, in the hospital stay with us, and just felt God's presence. And so I almost look back on it fondly, you can believe it, because of God's, you know, presence and his power through that. But I wrote a lot of the songs actually prior to even this experience and some of them after, mm-hmm. but it was what was amazing is that um, I did a lot of recording in the middle of it. So, so wow. I was actually recording a lot of the songs when um, when these things were going on, and so I was in some in some ways being ministered to by these songs that I wrote before. You wow. know, this all began, and it was so powerful then to be to have that kind of brought in with the recording process and and there was um when I, I actually got some of the uh some of the uh, the samples from the album like as the kind of they were finishing up and the producer was sending some of the tracks uh right before I was leaving because we, we went actually traveled to Philadelphia to Children's Hospital for his surgery mm-hmm. right before we left for that the producer had sent me some of the tracks and one of them was you make me brave you know to listen to uh, for the first time, you know, as we were, you know, traveling up for the surgery. And so it was just amazing to see how God just, all of that was so interwoven. And he knew, you know, when I was writing those songs, he knew what we would be walking through. And then yep. he used those songs to just encourage and minister to me. And um, it's, so that's really interwoven throughout the whole album. That, Isn't that, that the, funny the how he, uh, yeah, when you look back on your life and you see all the little puzzle yeah. pieces falling into place, you're like, Wow. And he Get knows yeah. that for each of us. It's just mind-boggling. Mm-hmm. If there's one thing that you hope that people get from your music, whether they are faithful, whether they're agnostics, whether they're Muslim, whether they're Jewish, whether they're atheist, what is it? One mm-hmm. thing. Oh, my hope is that they would encounter the true heart of God, um, that, you know, that he loved us so much to send Jesus to die as a propitiation for our sin. And that his love for us is so intense that he'll he won't he'll stop at nothing to kind of break through whatever situation that we're in in order to speak to us directly. We just have to allow him, you know, have to yeah. give him the space to do that in our lives and to, to just surrender all the things that we think we know about God and the experiences that we've had growing up 
and just lay that at his feet and ask him to reveal his heart, his true heart for us, um, his desire to be in a relationship with us, to speak to us daily, to give us guidance, and to really speak to us. You know, I, I mean, there's been many times in my life where I could say without a doubt, shadow of a doubt that I have audibly, you know, heard the voice of God because he wants to speak to us. Yeah. And we have to just be allowed, we have to allow him to do that. And I, that's really what I hope, you know, that anyone would take away from the album is that we just have a living, breathing, speaking Savior God, you know, who wants to have a relationship with us and he'll do whatever he can to break through to, to meet us where we're at, regardless of, you know, where, where we've been or what we're doing now or what we have done. Uh, that he just he wants and wants to meet us, you know, right where we are. I love it. Loves us enough that he doesn't force that, but he does want. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, You're Laura. Right. Again, visit with her online at lauracazor.org, and that's K-A-C-Z-O-R. We're going to end the show by playing greater. Laura, thank you so much for your time. God bless you as you continue your faith walk and continue to bless all of us with it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Everybody else, we'll see you on Monday. Hope you make it a blessed weekend. You are listening to the Mary Beth Conley Show, FM 107.9 and AM 990 on the dial. KWAM, the voice.com for everyone everywhere else. And here is Greater. to the